Well, it's three o'clock, and a very warm welcome to our webinar today. My name is Richard Hall. I'm the chairman of Zenith International, and we're specialist food and drink industry consultants. I'm delighted to be joined by a former close business associate, Ross Colbert. Thank you, Richard. Nice to be here. I'm the executive director and global strategist for beverages at Rabobank. Great. Our webinar will last for around 30 minutes. We'll present on three topics for 15 to 20 minutes and then take some questions. And I believe most of you are familiar with the technology, so if you've got any problems, um, email messages to us, but uh, log your questions at any time. So I'll talk about Global Beverages Summit, which we're holding um, later in March, then Global Beverage Trends, then we'll deal with emerging beverage categories, and um, we'll email you the presentation slides after the event. So first, our Washington event. Now, this Global Beverages Summit is our seventh global event uh, in beverages. It's on the 29th to the 31st of March in Washington, D.C. Normally, we have around 150 to 200 delegates, and we've got some key companies sponsoring this year. The full program and on look, online booking details are available on our website, and there are discounted rates available until the 25th of February. And those of you listening in right now, we're offering 20% off, and you'll get more details on that at the end of the webinar. We've chosen some fabulous um, locations in the past, and uh, this year we have the Cherry Blossom Festival time in Washington. The 2011 program has as its main feature a conference along the theme of healthy industry for a healthy society. We're working um, in association with the American Beverage Association. We've got during the program some retail store visits which are hosted by Coca-Cola and Honest Tea, including the Honest Tea founder, Seth Goldman. We're offering a sightseeing tour of Washington and there will be um, some functional drinks awards at the gala dinner um, during the Congress. And uh, if you haven't entered and you've got great innovations, do please do so by the 28th of February. So we've got the theme of the event as a healthy industry for a healthy society, and there are conference sessions on the marketplace, on obesity, on growth opportunities, on the environment and ethics, on investing in uh, emerging categories, and there will be some insight workshops as well. Our speakers come from a wide array of companies, market leaders, from Coca-Cola to Unilever, from opinion formers, from the Rainforest Alliance to the US government, uh, top innovators including Extreme Drinks and Zico, as well as investors, Caterton and Verlinvest, as well as Rabobank, um, and that's where Ross comes in again in a moment. So what about um, market trends? All the broad beverage markets are rising. And quite steadily over time, this chart shows from 2005 with projections through to 2015. Hot drinks and non-alcoholic drinks are really neck and neck at the moment, around about 550,000 million liters. Alcohol and milk are also tracking each other closer to the 200 billion liter mark. Within soft drinks, there are three major groups. Water is the fastest growing and the biggest in volume. And it may have overtaken milk and flavored milks last year, but milk is still ahead in value. Carbonated sparkling drinks are the other major category. And then the other category um, includes uh, juices, nectars, still drinks like iced teas and sports drinks, as well as syrups and powders. All growing, but water outgrowing the rest. In terms of growth over the last five years, here's a quick view. Um, tea is just in front of bottled water in terms of overall beverage volume growth. But beer has also seen substantial growth, even though it's declining in some markets. But that can be said, I think, of most um, categories too. There's been significant growth in some of the other groups, like coffee and milk and carbonated soft drinks and other soft drinks. So generally, you'd expect this, I guess, because there are growing world populations. We have a growing market volume uh, picture overall. What about the emerging drinks categories? Well, what was emerging in non-alcoholic beverages is now maturing to some extent, certainly hampered by the economic downturn. Um, iced tea is the biggest of the emerging sectors, up 29% in the last five years, now over 20 billion liters. Um, sports drinks 
um, are strongly led by Gatorade in the United States, where a recent brand overhaul has stalled growth, currently at 11 billion liters. Energy drinks have grown that line is a little deceptive by 63% over the past th five years, now over 4 billion liters, a uh, much bigger contribution clearly in value compared with volume. I've picked out three other emerging drinks segments. Um, here the economic climate has had a particular impact. Flavored waters now at 5 billion liters uh, are continuing to grow, but much more slowly for the time being. Similar pattern here for functional waters. Other functional drinks are growing strongly in some markets, but the global total is heavily influenced by the maturity of the Japanese market. I just pick on a moment for some new emerging ideas that we haven't covered before in our analysis. Um, these are three new elements in the market on which Zenith has just completed some new reports. The full reports are available for £1,250 sterling, and I believe that we're offering a 10% discount for orders placed by you if any of you are interested today. So the first is beauty drinks. A market in 2010, we believe, that had reached 144 million litres, um, with a retail sales value of really quite a surprisingly large 1.1 billion euros. It's led by um, the Japanese market and Asia Pacific. And key brands include um, Fracora 500, Astalist, and Borba. Uh, then you've got alertness and relaxation drinks. It's surprising in a way that these two markets are grouped together because alertness seems to me to be almost a contrast or contradiction to relaxation. But in 2010, this market uh, reached, we believe, um, internationally 133 million liters with a uh, retail sales value in excess of 500 million US dollars. Mainly these drinks are to be found at the moment in the United States, um, key brands like Drank and Coma Unwind. And the third new report we've just brought out this year is on biopackaging, relatively small in volume, 100 million liters or a bit more than that, but the focus of many an experiment. Now I'm going to hand over to Ross who's going to give you some observations about some of these changes in the market. Great. Thank you, Richard. And in looking ahead, I think there are really seven or eight kind of key developments that we've identified. And when you think of the global beverage industry, it's really become and reflects the tale of two economies. First, the you know, slow recovery in the Western world, affected by older demographics in mature markets, uh, in sharp contrast to the emerging Asian markets, where you have a much younger demographic profile and some interesting new products and segments. Uh, can't help but mention the raw material price inflation that we've seen very recently. Sugar is now at a 30-year high. Corn uh, also at a record high. PET prices uh, have increased dramatically since fourth quarter. Uh, I would say another development um, that's, that's taking place, the restructuring of Coke and Pepsi. Uh, it's an ongoing uh, challenge for both Coke and Pepsi as they integrate their bottling systems. Uh, Coke had a great earnings call last week. Pepsi continues to uh, work through some commodity price issues and re with a recent restructuring announcement. Uh, a big news on coming from the Asian markets, uh, the Japanese giants are breaking out. Three of the four Japanese brewers, all with record earnings in 2010, leading that pack, Asahi, Sapporo, and Suntory. Um, the industry continues to have an ongoing and active engagement in health and environment. I think that will continue. Uh, we're seeing a bit of a headwind continue also for premium products in light of the growth in private label in 2010. Uh, and last but not least, I think there's continued and mounting pressure on deposit taxes and recycling legislation as states and municipalities struggle to increase or balance their budgets. Um, Looking forward, key innovations to watch in the, in the year ahead. I think first and foremost, uh, sweeteners and ingredients are going to play a very major part of the coming year, uh, particularly stevia and zero calorie sugar taste. We're really seeing the start of what I characterize as a sweetener war uh, involving flavor enhancers and sweeteners. Uh, Pepsi's uh, been leading that effort and uh, recently announced that they're on the verge of some major news in this. Uh, proprietary flavors and masking as functional beverages increasingly become part of the landscape. Uh, it's a, the challenge for beverage companies is how to uh, make those ingredients, make those flavors 
uh, in a way that can mask functional benefits uh, and make them uh, you know, better tasting. Uh, new packaging formats, certainly the plant bottle, the bio pet bottle, uh, well established now in the landscape. I think closure technology is also evolving. We're starting to see some real uh, proprietary closure uh, systems. Uh, Value-added dairy is an innovation that continues to illustrate the convergence between fruit-based beverages and the dairy case. Uh, if you look at, you know, across the single-serve uh, beverage marketplace, dairies, both probiotic, prebiotic products, smoothies, yogurts, and kefirs uh, have really exploded, uh, as well as soy-based beverages, and now even more recently, almond-flavored milk. Uh, or almond milk. Distribution convergence between beer and soft drinks, uh, we continue to see that um, outside the U.S., Latin America, and parts of Europe. And I would say lastly, water use reduction has emerged as a key initiative. Um, you know, before CO2 reduction was, was a, a key issue, now we're talking water reduction. Um, from these innovations and, and, and from these trends, I think there are uh, six really um, trends to, to, to understand uh, better, certainly value uh, in light of the economy and the slow recovery in the West. Uh, consumers are still showing reluctance to spend on premium products. Uh, we touched on that uh, with private label. Uh, I, an example of that, I think, is in the ready-to-drink tea category. You've seen a shift from premiumization to value with 20-ounce can and family size packaging. Uh, benefits continues to be a strong trend here. Functionality, uh, I think, is a great example going from, from energy now to more pre-workout uh, uh, weight control drinks. Um, on the ethical side, this is really the behavior of a company. And increasingly, you're seeing brands um, take the initiative on either fair trade or organic certification, but certainly social responsibility is, is really a, a conscious part of corporate behavior today. Um, the other key trend, individuality, uh, the personalization of products, I think this is exemplified by functional beverages today. Um, I would say exploration, also a key theme. People are more willing than ever to experiment, but certainly within boundaries. I think an example there is the growth and development at kombucha tea. And lastly, contribution. Here, I think uh, brand owners need to be responsive to their communities. I think there's a growing notion of locavore, where buying and supporting local suppliers is increasingly part of consumer behavior. Uh, key companies to watch, we've identified 10 what I think are best-in-class emerging companies. They span all, a variety of segments and geographies. Uh, but these 10, my 10, would include Azure Group, which is the Ananios family uh, private label and contract bottling empire that started in Mexico, started in Peru, then to Mexico, and now today includes Vietnam and India. Uh, secondly, I would say Al Almirai, great Middle Eastern dairy juice and PepsiCo partnership with expansion plans across the Middle East. Um, here in Europe, Refresco has really emerged uh, with a buy-and-build strategy for acquiring and integrating private label soft drink businesses. 